once again, thanks everybody uh, for taking time out of your day. We appreciate uh, the opportunity uh, to have you visit with uh, Coach Joel Osborne, uh, the brand new head coach here at Benedictine. As, as you're aware, we, we introduced and announced Coach on Thursday last week and for various reasons, well, one of which was weather on Friday and then also being uh, cognizant of yesterday being Martin Luther King Jr. Day, uh, we felt it better to hold off until today to kind of get him in front of people and, and, and have him have an opportunity to speak a little bit about uh, himself and the future of Benetton football. So I think what I'd like to do at this point is I'll open up the floor uh, to Coach Osborne. And then after he's done making his opening statement, uh, then we can kind of go through uh, and uh, we'll try to figure this out as, as seamlessly as we can um, and, and have you guys uh, be able to ask some questions of him. Um, you know, we're, we're thinking probably 30 to 45 minutes, uh, you know, at, at most here, uh, just depending on how, how uh, many questions that uh, you guys might have of coach. Uh, so without further ado, Coach Osborne, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks, Josh. Uh, first off, I'd just like to say how excited I am uh, to be the next head football coach at, at Benedictine College. Uh, it's a great honor. It, it's extremely humbling uh, to be the head coach here. Um, you know, there's a lot of people to thank. Uh, First, I'd like to thank, uh, you know, obviously my parents, um, you know, they, they laid a great foundation for me. Uh, thank my family, my wife, um, my, my three boys and daughter to be on the way. And then, uh, you know, just my, my, my extended family as well. Um, you know, just looking at, uh, you know, who else helped me, um, you know, Coach Wright, Rich Wright at Northwest Missouri State and, and the current staff he has in place, um, you know, Mel Churchma, um, would be a guy that's been a, a mentor of mine. Um, another guy, Andy Peterson, the athletic director, um, Bob Borichter, former athletic director, Adam Dorrell, uh, head coach at Alvin Christian, Charlie Floor, uh, head coach of South Dakota Mines, uh, Ben McCollum, he's a head basketball coach at Northwest. He's a mentor of mine. Um, you know, the Northwest alumni and players that I got to coach as well in the community of Maryville, they were all great to us. Um, President John Jasinski and, uh, and Joe Quinlan, our strength coach. And then, and then the, the thing I'd tell you about uh, this job and what really attracted me here um, was the leadership that is in place at the college. Uh, starting at the top, uh, when I got to meet President Steve Minnis, um, you know, just a phenomenal leader, uh, his vision for where Benedictine College is going and his support of athletics is top notch, you know, and then, um, current head, or excuse me, former head coach, uh, Larry Wilcox, the foundation he has laid here um, is just incredible. And, and um, you know, it's something that I'm going to embrace and, and look to build off of and, um, you know, take what we've done here and, and try our best as a staff to make it better. And, uh, you know, and then last but not least would be uh, Charlie Gartenmeyer, the athletic director, uh, who is on my staff as well. So it's very unique. It's, it's pretty awesome to be able to, uh, talk with him every day. Um, you know, I had a relationship with him that goes back to when I was a graduate assistant at Northwest Missouri State. And so, you know, when he reached out to me and, and said that, uh, you know, they had an opening here and wanted to know if I had interest, uh, I, I just, I, yeah, absolutely I do. And so that's where it started. And uh, so, you know, th that's the things that I would say, one of the reasons why I'd say why I'm here, uh, it starts with the leadership. Um, number two, you can win here. And then number three, an opportunity to be a difference maker in the run mom program. Um, so, you know, I, I'm just really looking forward to getting going. We have three missions here in our football program. One is to graduate our players. Two is to win football games. And three is to develop men of character. And so there's different ways we're going to do that. Uh, but the main thing is we're going to focus on relationships and, uh, you know, relationships from player to player, player to coach, coach to coach. Um, coach to alumni, coach to professor, player to coach. There's a lot of relationships that need to be developed. And so that's the thing I'm looking forward to is getting in the process of developing those relationships, you know, and then, you know, where do we go next? You know, it's getting into our off-season programming and, and nobody really knows what that's going to look like because there's a possibility to play, right? So um, we're just excited. So we're going to take it one day at a time and uh, we're going to focus on getting better every day. And uh, you know, we're just really excited to get going. I'll open it up to any questions you guys have. Okay, so I think probably what we'll do is if you just want to 
raise your hand. I'll call your name and you can unmute yourself and ask the question. And then uh, I think we'll go from, I think that's probably the easiest way to, to do it. And then we'll get through this as best we can. So uh, Jacob. Hey coach, uh, you're coming from a lot of success at Northwest and you were in a lot of different uh, roles there. So uh, what are you taking from all those different experiences you had with the Bearcats and bringing uh, to your experience as a head coach here? Yeah, there's, I had a ton of great experiences there at Northwest, you know, going from a player to a graduate assistant to a full-time coach to um, being in charge of the offense and calling it. And, uh, you know, I just, the, the biggest thing that, uh, that we did at Northwest is, is we continued to um, look at ways to make ourselves better. And, um, you know, that, that's what you got to do every day. How can we make this better? You know, and, and we're not just doing this because we've done this. And so, um, that'd be my biggest takeaway from Northwest. And the, the thing is, is, you know, yes, it is great to win all those championships, but it's not necessarily about getting the ring. It's about what happens along the way, the relationships you develop, uh, the skills you develop that are going to develop, you know, lead to uh, success in life. And so that's really what it's about is developing all those things. Chris. Coach, I think you mentioned that your relationship with Coach Gartmeyer goes back to, I think you said your grad assistant days at Northwest. How did that relationship kind of flourish and now turn into this opportunity for you to be the head coach now? Well, he told me a story. He said one time they were coming up to uh, talk about how to defend the spread, and he was meeting with Coach Churchman, and Coach Churchman said, you know what you ought to do is just go down to the offensive meetings. And so he came into our offensive meeting room, and when I was a graduate assistant, um, you know, Coach Doral was the offensive coordinator and I actually coached the receivers and had the room to myself. So, you know, it was, we were very collaborative in our meeting and uh, he just really liked how we did that. And, and uh, he got to see me talk, you know, football with uh, Coach Doral and Coach Floor. And uh, he got to see me on the board and just one of those things where he was just trying to get better and to help Benedictine College. And, uh, you know, it uh, turned into seeing him at recruiting events. And then, you know, he would call me when they would want to come up and see our staff. And so just the relationship kind of developed over the years. And the other thing is, is, you know, he's known Mel Churchma for a long time. Uh, he's known Adam Doyle for a long time. He's also known Rich Wright for a long time. So, you know, those guys are all mentors of mine and, and it helps when, you know, when, when, uh, when a guy's calling to ask about, you know, what who could be a head coaching candidate, it helps to have those guys in your corner. James. Uh, Coach, what about the, the uh, Atchison and Benedictine community just kind of attracted you to this job also? Yeah, I think the big thing is when you when you pull into town and, and you turn it, you know, into downtown, you see how nice everything is. And then you you drive up to campus and, and uh, you know, the day I came, I, I just I could not believe how. I mean, I can I can believe it because I saw it, but it was, it just really impressed me how well kept everything was and how nice and new the buildings were and the facility upgrades. And, you know, you could see that. And that right away when I stepped, stepped into town and on campus, you know, I turned and told my wife and my dad, because um, he was with us, I said, I can sell this to recruits and families. You know, it's just a matter of getting people here to see it. Liam. Uh, I'll bounce off of James for that one, but um, how important, uh, Coach, is it getting out into the city of Atchison's community and, and building a strong bond, not with just the Benedictine students and alumni, but the actual residents of the town? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a big deal. I mean, no different it was for me in Maryville, uh, getting to know people in the community of Atchison. And, and uh, yeah, that'll be a big deal to us. You know, I've got my wife, Audrey, she's into personal training and fitness. So um, and then my three boys, are, you know, are into all different kinds of sports. Um, they love sports. So, you know, in Maryville, I was fortunate. I could coach my boys in, in uh, T-ball and coach them in uh, basketball and full like football. So I plan to continue to be involved in that. So I'm sure, you know, through a number of other different ways, I'm going to meet a lot of people, but I'm looking forward to it. Greg, do you have a question? I do. Um, coach, you are stepping into a unique situation with uh, football in the spring coming up. Can you describe how this tra transition is going to take place? Yeah, we're just taking it one day at a time, Greg. And, uh, you know, right now we're, we're, we're doing our best to figure out what that's going to look like. 
Uh, I'm very fortunate to have great leadership here still, you know, guys that have done this for a long time. You know, Coach Wilcox has uh, provided great mentorship for me already. You know, being this is my second day on the job, I've been able to talk with him numerous times and, uh, you know, and Coach Gardenmeyer as well. So we're, we're just taking it one day at a time. And like I told our kids yesterday in the team meeting, um, it's their job to prepare themselves every day so that when our opportunity does come, whenever that is, they're ready to go. And so that's what we're going to do. And, uh, you know, we're going to do the best we can. Are you anticipating being on the sideline for these games this spring? One thing that we have to do is we have to prepare for that. And if it happens, great. And if it doesn't happen, then at least we were prepared. You know, so there's so many things, Greg, out of our control. But it's one of the things I tell our kids that we're going to we're going to live by is is uh, we call it A and E. It's attitude and effort. And so those are the only two things we can control in our life. And so, you know, that's that's the one thing I preach. And, uh, you know, I'm and I live it as well. So um, if if the games take place this spring as scheduled, are you almost in a co-coach capacity since Coach Wilcox's retirement doesn't take effect until after the season? Well, that's something that we're working through right now. And uh, the one thing I know is Coach Wilcox, he's going to be there to provide mentorship for me, you know, and, and he is, he just, number one, he's a great person. So um, that, that's one thing that uh, will be to my benefit is I will have him here to help. And I, I will add for everybody that's not, you know, sure on how that, that goes. Um, so obviously the NAI moved their official playoffs to the spring. Um, Losing to Baker uh, had us get a runner-up position in our division. So we are not uh, one of the two automatic bids out of our conference uh, into the playoffs. So there are a lot of unknowns, uh, as Coach indicated, trying to figure out, do we try to schedule games? Do we try to anticipate getting an at-large berth into the playoffs? But then also setting us up so Coach Osborne has a full spring if we don't have the opportunity to play in the playoffs. So. Um, there's a lot of moving parts uh, as far as that goes, uh, as trying to figure out who we can play, who wants to play, because uh, really there's only two knowns out of, out of the Heart of America Athletic Conference going into the second semester, and that's Grandview won the North, Baker won the South, and they both have automatic bids into the playoffs. Beyond that, in a normal season, a runner-up in a division has an opportunity to, to have a pretty good shot at, at an at-large berth, but those at-large berths are not known at this point because we haven't even had a top 25 coaches poll. Um, those are going to come out as most of the NAI gets into playing games here in the next month or so. So um, just to kind of, to kind of clarify that, you know, it is definitely a unique situation and we are definitely moving a lot of moving parts uh, for this to happen uh, as it's happening right now in the spring. Thanks, Josh. Go ahead, Tommy. Tommy, I can't hear you. You might need to unmute. Yep. Hold on. Oh, my bad. There you go. <laughs> That's right. That's Sorry right. about that. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you talked about the uniqueness of the spring a little bit and kind of just, you know, waiting to see what the plan is and working with Coach Wilcox. I guess recruiting-wise, uh, how much work, legwork has gone into that? I know we've kind of had a recent signing period and um, still kind of waiting to see what happens with the spring and everything. But just in the days and hours that you've been here, how much legwork has there been in just talking to kids and kind of reaching out to – uh, talent that you know of yeah absolutely well you know I'm glad you asked that Tommy our our, uh, our staff here has done a great job they were recruiting the entire time uh, during the transition and uh, we actually on Friday uh, was my first day there was a blizzard in Maryville so I wasn't able to make it down here uh, like we were planning on but uh, so what we did was we did a staff zoom uh, Friday morning and we went through all the kids that were coming on the visit on Monday and went through their background and their academics and uh, the coaching staff's done a great job recruiting good football players, but also really good student athletes who are going to fit the Benedictine culture. So, um, yeah, I was really impressed. So my first day on the job was Monday, and we had 18 recruits on campus. So that was exciting yesterday. And so we, we had uh, recruits on campus, and then we had a team meeting as well. And then uh, the Martin Luther King Day uh, events happened as well. So it was a great day to be here in Benedictine. Um, but to answer your question further on recruiting, Yes, we're having visits uh, um, weekly, multi multiple visits a week. And, uh, 
you know, I've been able to identify kids that, you know, we were recruiting, well, at least I was recruiting or we were recruiting at Northwest that were maybe, um, you know, guys that were on our list. And so I've been able to go to that right away and, and use the relationships that I have with the high school coaches, you know, to find out, hey, who should we be recruiting right now? And so that, that has helped. And we're going to get some of those kids on campus soon. If I could follow up to that, uh, you obviously had great offensive success at Maryville. Is there something about your system or your scheme that you think can transition well to, uh, to this new job at Benedictine? Yeah, I, absolutely. I think the biggest thing is, you know, is we're going to fit our system around our people. And so we've got to find out, you know, who our people are right away. And then we've got to have um, a system in place that will highlight the best players we have. You know, we got to have great quarterback play. Um, I think to have that, it's going to start with your protections. You got to have to be able to protect the quarterback and make sure he feels really comfortable in the pocket and trust the guys in front of him. And then from there, it's just dissecting what are you getting from a shell standpoint on the defense and then taking what they give you and, and then trying to put your best players in position to be successful and to do what they're good at. And hopefully you're targeting the worst defenders. And so, you know, and, and we're going to be aggressive. I mean, you know, I've said it, we're going to, we're going to have a couple trick plays every game that we're going to run. And so, and those will be installed, they'll be practiced and they'll get called, you know? So, um, you know, our kids are excited. Um, our, our staff's excited to get going and uh, we'll play aggressive football. Uh, um, and, you know, we'll look to the biggest thing we're going to do too, is we're going to, we're going to work off of each other. So, you know, meaning that, um, you know, the defense's goal is to get the offense the ball in the best field position. We're going to try to take advantage of that. We're also going to take care of the football, meaning we don't want to put the, the defense in a, a bad position, you know, and then from a special team standpoint, there's yards that are won and lost on special teams. We want to win those yards and we want to be sound in our protections. We want to be sound in our coverage and we want to be able to have great two seconds of great effort on PAT field goal and put the ball through the upright. So, I hope that kind of gives you a little bit of an answer as an overall, as opposed to just offense. Yeah, no, that's good. Thanks. Yep. Greg, you have a follow-up? Uh, I do. Coach, um, uh, Coach Wilcox had a um, great admiration for Coach Tom Osborne at Nebraska. So my question to you is, uh, do you feel like uh, Frank Solich, who succeeded Tom Osborne at Nebraska? I feel like Joel Osborne. <laughs> I, uh, I tell you what, there's one thing I've learned. So, you know, I played for a guy in high school named Kurt Blatt. Kurt Blatt is, uh, he is Larry Wilcox of my hometown. Okay. Kurt Blatt is in the national high school hall of fame. He's got over 400 career wins. He's been in 20 state championships and won 12 of them. You don't replace that guy. You don't try to replace that guy. You just try to do the best you can do. And so, and his, I've watched that happen in Harlan. His son, Todd took over the program there last year. In his first year, they were able to take him to the state championship game. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I've seen it happen. You know, and then at the college level, I also saw it happen with Mel Churchma. You know, we had Scott Boss who got hired. You know, unfortunately, Scott didn't get a coach in a game. He passed away from a heart attack. But, you know, our staff was put in a position where we were all young. You know, and Adam Doral was the head football coach. And, and AD did a great job leading our team. You know, and nobody expected uh, us to be able to do anything close to what uh, Coach Churchma did, and, you know, in Adam's first uh, six years, we were able to, you know, win three national championships. So what I'm saying is Adam didn't try to be Mel Churchma, and I've seen that take, you know, I've seen that. So, um, you know, I just got to be the best version of myself, and I'm going to rely on our staff. You know, Coach Wilcox, the staff that's in place here is here for a reason. He trusts them. They're good coaches. They can recruit. Um, they develop relationships with players. So, I'm going to rely on those guys, you know, and they're going to play a huge role in our success here. And, uh, and that's the biggest thing I've got to get to know our staff and I get to get to know our players. So that way we can, um, everybody can be in a position to succeed. Thanks for the question. Chris. Coach, from the relationship part of it, you talked about when you came to visit and everything, your dad was with you too, just being able to have that bond that, I don't know how many people kind of know the bond that you and your dad have, but just having him here with you to go through taking the visit and kind of seeing what the campus is about and just also that part of the relationship too. Yeah. So we, uh, we came down the day after Christmas on our own uh, without anybody knowing uh, my wife and my dad and I, 
And, uh, you know, it's just, it's great to have him with me. He's another set of eyes. Uh, he's my mentor, um, my main mentor in life. Um, you know, he's been a high school athletic director and basketball coach. Well, he's been a, he retired from being the athletic director after 22 years, um, had a ton of success at Harlan being the AD and uh, basketball coach for over 30 some years now. And he's in the, uh, you know, he's in the Iowa Hall of Fame and he was national coach of the year. So um, I really trust him, you know, and, and uh, so that was a big deal to be able to come down here with him and, and see this place. And, you know, just not that he was telling me what to do. He was, he was sitting back and just taking it in and, you know, and, and he's been to, you know, and I have grown up in Iowa. I mean, I've been to the campuses of Grandview, Morningside, Northwestern, Dort. You know, those are the, some of the best programs in Iowa. So I've been there to, and seen those. And, uh, you know, I, I just feel like what I saw here on this, this campus, um, this is one of the elite campuses in the NAI and, you know, in the Midwest. And so, you know, that, that's a huge deal to me um, because, you know, when a, when a kid looks at a school, he, he's going to want to see himself being there. And if you have one of the nicest campuses and, and places to be for that period of time, you know, that's just, it's a huge, huge, huge plus, you know, it's, it's the, it's the first thing they see, right? So. All right. Anybody else? That may be time for one or two more. Liam. Yeah. Uh, so coach, is there, I don't know how much footage you've watched of the team so far, especially this past season, but is there a certain position group that uh, has kind of caught your eye from uh, on Benedictine's roster so far? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing I've got to do is, is number one, with where we're at, we got to find out who's coming back. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we've been really good here. And so um, I don't want to point out a certain group yet because I don't know enough information in terms of that. Uh, but I do know that uh, there are a lot of good, good players. Um, you know, the, the thing we've got to do is find, like I said, find out who's coming back and we've got to find out what we have in terms of a roster. So. And we're working through that right now. You know, we just had our first team meeting yesterday. So um, the exciting thing is, is they play a physical brand of football. They're able to run the ball. They're able to stop the run. You know, and I know creating turnovers on defense and then, you know, scoring points on offense. So, um, you know, I'm just excited to get to work with everybody and to see, you know, get everybody out there into to our offseason workouts. You know, I say offseason. Who knows what that looks like right now. But, um getting people to work out so I can see what I'm working with. If that makes sense. All right. We got time for one more question. If anybody has one. All right. Well, if not, thanks guys. We appreciate uh, the coverage today and, and thank you for taking time to, to visit with coach Osborne. Uh, we're excited to have coach on campus. We're excited to get the, the new era of Raven football uh, started when that happens. May that be a, a spring game in the traditional sense or, or him helping out with the staff as we hopefully make a playoff run as well this spring. So unique times here at Benedictine, but thank you guys for taking the time. We appreciate it. Thank you guys.